Hello everyone and welcome to this Christchurch Manchester online service. It's great to be able to meet together, albeit virtually, today. Um, my name is Mike. And I'm Hannah. Uh, we're part of the Lady Barnes site of CCM. Just a day to day, so I am one of the uh, site leaders at Lady Barn, and I also uh, work full time for an energy consultancy day to day. And I work with the Christian unions uh, at the universities in Manchester and um, enjoy doing that uh, day to day when I'm not looking after our little baby girl, um, which is fun. Well, um, we're going to go into a time of worship now. So can I encourage you, don't uh, just sit in your seats, get up from where you are and um, engage, get your Bible out, get your arms um, stretched, hands out, maybe ready to receive what God wants to speak to you today, even though we're online um god still is here he wants to meet with us he wants to meet with you in your home and so yeah um my encouragement to you is do whatever you need um, in order to engage with him today because he's a god who loves to speak to us so let's worship I won't be overwhelmed 
give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, and I will love you. Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. And God, I look to you. You where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do, and I will. so much for leading us in worship today it's so great just to start our service and our time together by our saint by praising god together we're gonna hear now um about how people have been uh, finding this lockdown time and we're gonna be hearing from the banforths uh, how they've been finding it um and i'm really looking forward to hearing their stories and what they have to say isn't it wonderful to hear from our church family they're at kingsway Hi, we're joined today by Joe and Rich from our Kingsway site. Um, yeah, what have you guys been up to in the lockdown? Uh, yeah, so uh, for me, uh, I work at the Oasis Centre and during that time I've spent um, a lot of time there, fortunately, to uh, be able to be one of the members of the team who uh, 
helped the emergency provision there and I headed up their food bank and uh, did all that kind of stuff really. So I spent a lot of time marking up tins, making sure they're in day and all of that. And then lots of shopping, running around the shops, buying three of everything at the start of it because that's all you could get. And then uh, just um, sit giving food parcels and handing those to the people who need them in and around Gorton. And worked there for four months and now uh, that was in Thameside Hospital um, and then I started at Manchester Royal um, in August and been working on a Covid ward. Um, so yeah, we've been working. Yeah. How have you guys, obviously that's like a lot going on in a yeah, quite intense period, how have you guys been able to, whilst you're working on the Covid wards or at the Oasis Centre, really rely and trust in God in this like new normal? Yeah, I think for us at Oasis and for me at Oasis, it's just been amazing to see God's provision. Um, just a few times you've seen him come through, like finishing days with like one tin of soup left and thinking, right, what do we do if someone comes tomorrow? And then like God would bring some donations in or bring some finance in for us to go shopping and just seeing him provide through all of that, not having to turn away a single person at the door. There was one time I was in a shop for the Oasis Centre and I uh, got chatting to the lady in front of me in the queue and she said, look, let me buy the shopping for the food bank. And, you know, just time and again, God's provision, knowing that he knows our every need has just been amazing. Mm, amazing. Yeah, and I think working on the wards and intensive care, it's been a difficult few months, um, but remembering that God is sovereign over it all, that there's things that we can't fix as humans, mm. and knowing that, um, yeah, we, we trust in God and he is good, and sort of focusing on that um, has been key, really. Mm. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, guys, and giving up your evening to, to chat to me. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, it's just wonderful hearing how you're doing and, um, yeah, be able to be family at this time. Well, um, we're going to hear now from Abby Alsop. She's going to bring the word to us today. Um, Abby is a graduate um, from... Uh, at university here in Manchester and she is now uh, working as a speech and language therapist. Um, she is an incredible preacher, an incredibly gifted uh, woman of God and um, I've had the joy of working with her in lots of different contexts and I'm always just blown away by just how brilliant she is but also just her heart for Jesus so I'm excited um, to hear what she has to say today and what God's been speaking to her through Colossians. So um, get your Bibles out, get your notebooks out and get excited because God's going to speak. Great. Hi there, my name's Abby. Um, I'm normally found at the CCM Fallowfield site. Uh, it's great to be speaking to you this morning. I've been part of CCM for I think about five years now um, and it's been an amazing church family to be a part of. And we're starting a new series today called Only Jesus and our key text for this series is Colossians. So I'm going to give you a summary of the book whilst you flick to Colossians in your Bible. Colossians was written by Paul and he wrote it to the church plant in Colossae, the Colossians, and, and he wanted to kind of develop this personal connection with the people that he hoped to teach and serve. He didn't want to just go from city to city asserting his apostolic authority. So this letter has quite a personal tone and it would have probably been really significant because Paul wanted to forge such a relationship with the church in Colossae that he could start to call out the heretical teachers that had infiltrated that community. And Paul was most likely writing this from a prison in Ephesus which was on the sort of sea coast of modern Turkey. So let's read our passage and unpack the theme of only Jesus makes us fruitful. So we're in Colossians 1 and we're going to read um, Colossians 1 verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, 
to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace to ye from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the sons he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So Paul is delighted to hear about this new church but in Paul's role as an apostle, which is someone who would uh, pursue mission and teaching, he wanted to make sure that the new believers knew how to nurture and produce more fruit as a church. And the fruit's already begun to appear. And it's interesting to see that this is what Paul focuses on when he tells them how he heard about the new church coming into being. He doesn't say that he's heard about their new learning and wisdom. He does, of course, want them to grow in understanding and wisdom. But that's not the telltale first sign of life. He doesn't say he's heard about their newfound holiness, their following really strict rules, their religiosity, although he does want them to live a new sort of life. Paul chooses to highlight one key thing, the fruit that appears quietly, but surely within a genuine Christian community soon after it's planted. And what's the sign of life in this church? Well, verse eight says, it's their love in the spirit. Their love in the spirit. The way they live their lives mark them out. So I wonder, what are the signs of a life lived with Jesus do you display? Does your life echo the sign of God at work in you? The church in Colossae was in a society marked by lust and anger and lies. It was chaotic. But they were different because of their encounter with the living God. Their families were known for kindness and gentleness. They were known for forgiveness and acceptance of one another as members of the same family. Even where there were major differences of race, of background, of culture. And this was the sign of God at work in them. So I've got three main points for us today to help us unpack this passage and go away with some learning. And the first is, to bear fruit, you first have to plant a seed. The church in Colossae was thriving because the gospel was transforming hearts and therefore the whole community could see this. Verse 5 says, the word of truth of the gospel was the seed planted in Colossae. The seed, the word, is powerful. So when it is spoken, God works through it, spreading the plant of new life, of colour, of fragrance and fruit in every place. And this might remind you of the parable of the sower, the story where seeds fell on some good soil and the plants grew up and they grew and produced absolutely loads of fruit because they were on good soil. The good news brings new creation. And our God is on a mission to make all things new. 
Do you have the truth of the gospel planted in you? Do you know Jesus as your saviour? Proverbs 13 verse 12 tells us that hope deferred makes the heart sick. And I think a huge amount of the pain and the suffering we see in the world around us is because our culture is kind of got this massive amount of hope deferred. People are seeking out hope in all sorts of things, all sorts of indulgences and stuff that ultimately isn't good for them. You know, is it any wonder that the UK is known as the addictions capital of Europe? So many people are having difficulties with alcohol and drugs. It's estimated that alcohol and drug addiction can cost the nation £36 billion per year. Many people around us in our halls, in our streets, our workplaces, the places that we visit, are losing hope and living without a story that brings belonging and purpose. We are part of God's renewal plan. And if we want to be fruitful, we need to be in right relationship with God. The seed of the gospel must be planted in us. The narrative of the Bible begins with humanity walking and talking with God in the Garden of Eden and ends with humanity walking and talking with God in a renewed heaven and earth. You see, what starts in a garden ends in a garden city. Between Eden and the renewed heaven and earth is this story of decreation, the created order unravelling through sin. Then we have the story of recreation, which finds its climactic moment in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Some people might say that our faith is escapism. We just believe in this stuff, but it's not true. It, It doesn't mean anything. But our story is of God making his home in us, healing and restoring every aspect of brokenness in our world and the church in Colossae have the seed of the gospel planted in them they knew the truth and they were set free they had this gospel planted in them so that those around them were shown that they could stop hoping in the promises of the world and start hoping in the faithful good promises of God second point A plant will only grow if it's nurtured. I wonder if any of you acquired a plant in lockdown. I know a lot of my friends did um, and enjoyed looking after some house plants during all of that time at home. And hopefully you'll remember from primary school that a plant needs various things to grow. It needs rich, good soil for those roots to go down deep and bring in nutrients. It needs water. It needs light. Uh, And some plants might also need just the right temperature, just the right setting. And some really needy plants will need someone to talk to them or to sing to them. If you don't give a plant some of those things, it's not going to thrive, is it? And much is the same for our spiritual well-being and our faith developing. And I've got a prop for the visual people watching to help illustrate this a bit more. So, believe it or not... These two plants are exactly the same, called a Hedera helix or an ivy plant. It was three pounds from Ikea, but this one is crispy. It's withered, it's dull, it's pretty much dead. I don't know why we still have it to be fair, but this one, this one is green and vibrant and growing and full of life. Well, how could two plants living in the same house turn out so different? Well, I'll put my hands up and say that this one got a little bit neglected, whilst this one had a prime spot in our living room, meaning that it got way more attention and nurturing. For a plant to grow, it needs to be nurtured. And what does Paul say about nurturing our faith? Well, in this passage, he's explaining that when people become Christians, when they accept Jesus as their saviour, God plants in them a new sense of his presence and love, his guiding and strengthening. But this sense needs to be nurtured and developed. And we're actually given some directions in our passage in Colossians. And if you have a look at verses 10 and 12, 
We're to live a life that is worthy of the Lord. We are to produce good things. We are to grow in our knowledge of God. And we're to be thankful. And actually to do this, God has given us his power so that we can have great endurance and patience. Jeremiah 17 verses 7 to 8 says this. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when the heat comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. To flourish, we need to be connected to Jesus. We need to be planted by streams of living water. And practically, I think that means we need to think about our lifestyle, our rhythms that bring us more in step with the kingdom. And for some of us, that might mean a change in priorities or a change of perspective. And as believers, we're continually learning to live how God wants us to live. It's not about being perfect. It's not about taking all of this and trying to put it all in place at once. It's about continually learning and listening to God. Not because he's a dictator who wants to control us like puppets, but because God is the great gardener who knows what is best for his creation. Only because of the new covenant in Jesus can we enter into this thriving and beautiful new life. Only Jesus makes us fruitful. The London Institute for Contemporary Christianity suggests six markers of a fruitful life in Christ. So we're going to take a look at them. They all begin with M. So uh, if you're jotting down notes, you might want to jot these down. The first M is modelling godly character. A fruitful Christian will want to live an attractive, distinctive, Christ-like lifestyle in front of the watching world. And I think we could see that in the Colossians. They were so public about their faith. Others could see that there was something different about them. The second M is making good work. A fruitful Christian will work hard at their job or their commitments. They will make good use of their God-given skills and talents. Third up is ministering grace and love. A fruitful Christian will show generosity and kindness to people that they come into contact with. And that could be meeting someone in the supermarket. It could be how you use your money, how you spend your time. The next M is moulding culture. A fruitful Christian will try to change their workplace and their neighbourhood for the better. They will seek to be an influence for good in the way that they live their life. The fifth M of a fruitful life is being a mouthpiece for truth and justice. Because a fruitful Christian will speak up for victims of injustice and champion the cause of the poor and the vulnerable. The sixth and final M is being a messenger of the gospel. A fruitful Christian will want to share their faith with their friends, their family, their colleagues. They will want to tell them all about Jesus. And we won't produce any of these fruits alone. We need a relationship with Jesus. And through the Holy Spirit, we are given the strength and power to live this way. So how are you nurturing your faith? And I know it has been so hard during this time to just keep going. Life has been so tricky this year. We feel like we're kind of just plodding through 2020. We're all desperate for some change. We're desperate for things to mean that we can come back together. Maybe some of you have given up a bit on God. Are you feeling a bit weak, a bit lifeless and dry, a bit like my plant earlier? Well, I can totally relate to that if you are. I found this season so tough. But the times that I have chosen to open up my Bible to cry out to God, to pray my hardest prayers, to just meet with my father. Those have been the times where there's been signs of new life breaking through. In many ways, it's felt like a season of kind of pruning and stripping back, removing the things I don't need. But also it's been really hard and there's been many of the things that I love and enjoy that I've not had access to. 
But actually, we can choose to worship. We can trust in the one who knows how to bring the dead to life. We are given that promise again and again in scripture. I love this quote from Kay Warren, who's an author. Circumstances may appear to wreck our lives, but God is not helpless among the ruins. If you're feeling wrecked and just surrounded by brokenness and those ruins, well, God wants to breathe new life into you. And we are invited to plant our roots deep by that living water. And we can take inspiration from the church in Colossae and put our hope in God. Because God's intention is for human life to flourish and bear fruit. My third and final point for us today is that a fruitful garden gives glory to the gardener. Jesus said, I am the true vine, abide in me, stay in me. Branches that abide in me will be fruitful. So Jesus promises that if we stay in the vine, we will continue to bear fruit. And what's the point of bearing fruit? Well, if you think about an actual garden, the purpose of flourishing plants is to create something beautiful for the gardener, whether that is just gorgeous flowers to look at and enjoy, or if that's to produce you know, fruit like apples and pears to be eaten and enjoyed. By remaining focused on Jesus, we are producing good fruit that gives glory to God. Our actions should be pointing to the majesty, grace and love of our God. We've not been saved by our good works. We've been saved for good works. We've been saved to be part of recreation of this renewal process. And we are unconditionally loved by God. And because of this, we are freed to show that love to others, just like the Colossians did. And not only does a fruitful Christian experience sort of fullness of life, but we're part of a new creation work that God is doing. And we're starting to see fullness of life all around us. I've been reading a book by Pete Hughes, who uh, leads King's Cross Church in London. And in the book, Pete is exploring how God is on a mission to make all things new. He explains that God's desire is to bring restoration to every sphere of society. And in the book, Pete guides you through scripture showing that God is relentless in redeeming lives. He's relentless in healing nations, in rewiring culture and bringing renewal to all creation. He answers this really tricky question. Well, how do we go about renewing culture and partnering with God to transform our cities and communities? His answer is that we must become like God. From God's identity, all of his actions flow and it is in the activity of God that we are redeemed and transformed. God's doing redeems and transforms our being and our being then overflows into our doing. So if you see our good works, point back to the identity of God. The language of likeness or image bearers is used throughout the Bible. It's also seen in royal ideology from Mesopotamia and Egypt. And at that time, kings and priests uh, were designated the image or likeness of a particular God. They were tasked with representing that deity. The task of royalty is to rule. And humanity has been given the task to be God's royal representatives. We are invited to be fruitful and to multiply. So with a royal identity, humanity is given a royal task to rule and be part of renewal. See, our multiplying, our, our planting churches, our, our starting community groups, our getting involved in transforming communities is the means by which God's own glory fills the earth. And I believe that amongst those who are watching, who are joining this service today, are individuals with dreams to see the city of Manchester transformed. I believe that there are business ideas, there's startups and leaders whose good works are part of God's renewal plans. A life pleasing to God doesn't have to be boring. I think the Colossians are a testimony to that. Living a life with kingdom mentality can be exciting. See, I love being part of a church like CCM that's not scared to do new things, to plant more sites, to just have a go at stuff. 
and to be obedient to what the Father's saying. And for some people today, you might actually just be realising, oh, I've kind of walked away from my identity as a daughter or of a son of the King. I want to remind you that you are his royal representative and that only Jesus is going to make your life fruitful. Only Jesus will give your life true meaning and satisfaction. So just to sum up, to bear fruit, you first have to plant a seed. A plant will only grow if it's nurtured and a fruitful garden gives glory to the gardener. We're to direct the attention of our minds to the word of God's promises. And we're to seek in all humility the help of the Holy Spirit. We're not doing this alone. Wouldn't it be amazing if people saw CCM in the way that Paul saw the Colossians? Not for our own glory, but so that they would experience the love of God and all of that glory would point back to him. My prayer is that we would be known as a church that loves one another and loves our community deeply. And that ultimately this is going to bring glory to our amazing God. And I'd just like to read a little passage to finish up before I pray. So if you want to join me in finding Isaiah 55 in your Bible. If not, I'm just going to read it for us because this has been a passage I've come back to again and again uh, during this really tricky season. And I feel like for some people they need to hear these words again. Come all ye who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendour. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to God and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty." but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. And instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Yes, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much just for, um, yeah, this passage in Colossians that we've got uh, so much from today. I thank you for Paul's writings that were just full of encouragement. And thank you that you, um, through this passage, have shown us so much of what it is to be a disciple, that we need to be actively nurturing our faith as we pursue living a life for you, Lord. We pray that in our actions, in our words, we would do things that are pleasing to you. Lord, we ask that you would show us how we can flourish, how we can do good works for you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh
Thanks so much, Abby, for sharing with us this morning, for taking the time to prepare that message and for sharing with us. Um, yeah, so great to hear that. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into Colossians as a church and seeing how God's going to speak to us through that. We're just going to go into a time of prayer now. Um, so I'm going to pray and Hannah will follow. Father God, um, yeah, I thank you so much that we can hear your word and that you speak to us through it. I pray that um, the words that we have heard today, that you would be shaping us through your Holy Spirit as we mull it over and how we, how we consider it further. I pray that you would con continue to shape us and speak to us. We want to lift up uh, our city to you at this time, Lord, at this uh, kind of crazy bonkers time. I just want to pray particularly for the lonely in our city, for those people who this week, the idea of further isolation, not seeing other people is, um, yeah, just a really painful um, thought and idea. And I just praise you so much for your gospel. And I just pray that you would be using us as your church to love our city well, um, and that you would just be of great comfort to at the lonely in our city. Amen. And yeah, Father, we just thank you so much that you are a God that is on the move, that um, even in the midst of a lockdown, God, you are not locked down. Lord, that you come and meet us in our vulnerabilities, in our different seasons, in our highs and our lows, and you long and delight to bring fruit of your kingdom, of your glory, of, of your character through those seasons, even in the midst of the, yeah, of all of the roller coaster of this season, Lord, we thank you that you are, you are ultimately the gardener. You're the one that is, um, yeah, bringing and cultivating life, um, and through your kingdom in our lives, and and Lord, you're bringing your life in Manchester, and God, we we just ask and we pray for. There's places where um, there's darkness, Lord, would your light shine in. We pray for um, the kids in this city as they are in their schools and in their classrooms. We pray for the teachers. We pray that those classrooms will be full of your presence and full of your spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would be um, revealing yourself um, and revealing Christ in people's hearts and lives through this time. We pray for... And um, those who are unemployed or face unemployment at this time, God, we pray, have mercy. We pray, um, provide and um, look after those who are worried and anxious. We pray that um, we as a church would be able to be your light and, your, and the embodiment of you in this time. Help us to step out of our comfort zones with courage and love those around us. And God, um, Help us to lean not on ourselves in this time, not on our abilities, but to lean into you, to lean um, on you. And God, thank you that so much that throughout this time, throughout the ups and downs of this roller coaster, Lord, you are our sure and steadfast um, foundation. You're not moved. Um, and God, um, we just thank you and praise you for that today. So be with us and speak to us and keep building your kingdom, growing fruit within our lives. Um, yeah. Amen. Uh, just a few notices to share with you before we end our service today. Um, firstly, in a couple of weeks time, on the, the weeks of the 22nd and the 29th of November, we are going to have our Give Big uh, across CCM. Yeah. And this is a really great, uh, exciting opportunity that was I think so encouraging for us as a church, uh, kind of back in spring when we were able to worship God by raising a lot of money for um, churches, um, Christians around the world struggling with their economic uh, repercussions of COVID. And so this time we're gonna be raising money for uh, the Oasis Center, for Barnabas and for the churches of Eastern Ukraine. And um, yeah, so I just urge you to be considering thinking about what you 
um, feel led to, to give these next few weeks. Um, also, we'd love to connect with you further and there's, there'll be a link that may pop, pop up and it's just um, on christchurchmanchester.com forward slash connect. If you fill out your details on that, it would just a helpful way for us to be in contact with you. Um, and also, if you go to the CCM website, um, or, and on the, there is a giving section where you'll be able to, to give as well. Great. Well, thanks, guys, for joining us um, today. Wherever you are, whatever your week looks like, we pray that you know God's presence with you. We pray that you know um, him uh, building and growing a fruit in your life. And, and we pray that you know his, um, his delight and his wonder. Um, even in the midst of the dark evenings, we pray that um, you see his light shining and you would know it. Um, yeah, so yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.